Let's take a look at function notation, part one, page 465 in our workbook. So what does function notation really mean? So we're going to look at what it's function notation, which is written as a symbol f of x. Okay, it's read as either as f at x, or I like to say f of x. Okay, so what does this really mean? So f of x provides a formula for a function. We have seen this in different ways. So if remember, we can take a look at a relation in different ways. We can take a look at it as a table of value, as a graph, like they're showing us over here as an equation. Um, but we just learned what we have special functions. So how do we differentiate something that is just an equation? We use the symbol f of x, that's this one. So when you see something like this, you know that we're talking about a function here. Okay, so here we have a function f of x equal to 15x. If I wrote it as just an equation, an equation, remember, can be either a function or a relation. So we can't tell, remember, without a graph or without a set of ordered pairs, whether this equation is a function or not. You don't know that, right? So if I draw you a graph for it, yes, you can take a look at the vertical line test and you'll be able to tell. But what if I just give you a simple equation like this? Um, you don't know what this graph really looks like, okay? So if you graph it, you can tell whether it's a function or not. But if I take the same equation and write it as f of x, I am telling you that this is a function. So this is in a math way letting you know that you're dealing with a function. So this notation is a way for us to tell which equation, whether it's a function or not. So just to let you know, this is a parabola that looks like this. So that's where you would say this is a function here. Okay, so now, um, what can we do with this notation? So now that we know this notation, there's different ways that we can actually read this information. So, and that's what we need to learn, okay? So in this question right now, we're given a graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this visual uh, thing to help us figure out what those wordings mean. So in this case, income is a function of time. So remember, this is the independent variable. And that makes sense, right? The dependent, independent, um, sorry, the dependent variable um, depends on the independent variable, okay? So that's what your income is. Your income is dependent on basically the number of hours. Okay. So you can also say here that income is a function of time because whatever money you're going to make um, is going to depend on how much um, time you actually put in that job. Okay, so they can either give us a, the equation written as f of x is equal to, so this is just f of x is equal to 15 times x, or they can give us a graph, and we can get a lot of information from here. So let's say if I ask you questions, so I'm going to ask different questions here. I can ask you what is your income or the income for this person? Um, for, um, let's say, in this case, for, for two hours. So if they worked for two hours, what is their income? So in this question, we need to find out what is given to us and what is being asked. So if they're asking what is income, obviously we know they're asking for what Y is. And if they gave us two hours, we know they're telling us X is equal to two. So you will go to your, your graph and you can say, okay, for x that's equal to two, you will go here and you'll figure out how much income they ended up making. So your answer to this question would be $30, hour, uh, $30. okay? I can ask another question then also. I can say how many hours Um, did this person work to 
to earn $60. So again, what is given and what's being asked here? So they are telling us the money. So they're letting us know that Y is equal to 60, but now they're asking for how many hours. So that's what that question here is. So you'll again go into your, your this time you'll go into your Y is 60. So you'll go this way now and then come back and figure out what your X is and that's four. So your answer to that question would be four hours. Okay. So that's reading the graph. We know how to do this. How is the same question asked in function notation? That's what we're trying to learn here, right? So when it comes to function notation, if they are giving you the X, they will give it to you like this. They'll say F of two. Remember I said that's a function, how you read it? So remember this is F of X, the notation. So in place of X, they put in two. So where x was, they put 2 in for you. So this is the same way from them telling you that x is 2 in the function notation. So if they are giving you x, they will put it where the x usually goes in, the, in this f of x. So exactly the spot of x, they put 2 in. So when you see this, you then go ahead and you do this step. You say, okay, they are telling me what x is. I need to find what y is. So you take your function notation equation or you go back into your graph and you did exactly what you did. And you say they told me what x is. They told me x is 2. So that means my this is basically your y. Your y comes out to be $30. So you can use your equation or you'll do the exact same thing. They're telling me X is two. So you'll go back again. What we did, we read it on the graph and we read that it's 30. Either way, whether you use the graph or you use the equation, we can find F of X. So remember F of X represents the Y, which is the income. Okay. So if they want to ever give you X value, they put it inside where x is okay and if they want you to give the y they will say f of x is equal to 60. so remember y and f of x are the same thing so here they're telling you that the y value is 60 and you'll see the missing part that we, we don't know is x so they're telling you this y is 60 and you would go and you can find out what x is it's four or you can put it into that equation you can say f of x is equal to 15x f of x or y is 60 and i need to find what x is so when you divide it by 15 x is equal to four okay so just remember this the main point that we need to remember here is that X represents X. So when X is given, it will look like this. The value of X is put inside here. Okay, so this means X is given. You need to now find Y. And when Y is given, it will look like this. So not the X, but the Y is given, which now means you need to find what X is equal to. Okay, we're going to practice this in the next examples.